Welcome to Wine Times, and I'm delighted to introduce you today to Craig Doyle, probably one of Ireland's most reputable broadcasters, and certainly a face that you'll all recognise. Absolutely delighted to have Craig here. Great to see you, Good Craig. to be here. Thanks very much, Barry. Yeah, good well, to be here. Good to have you here. So, Craig has obviously got a passion for this subject as well. That's why he's agreed to come along today. But I'm interested, you've been very lucky to have travelled a lot in both your career and just in your personal life. Was there any particular country that you visited that you said, you know, something really special with the culture, the cuisine, or even, more importantly, the wines? The wines are very important. Yeah, well, I mean, every country you go to, you'll find something in there in terms of culture or food or wine or, or, or some kind of alcohol. Mm -hmm. um, I suppose my favorite place to visit in the world is South America. Mm -hmm. um, and my favorite part of South America is Patagonia, way down south. Uh, not a lot there, just huge areas of just beautiful landscape. You get glaciers, you get uh, beautiful glacial lakes, huge mountains. Uh, it's a stunning part of the world. Mm -hmm. and. Actually, wine is a big part of the culture down there in Argentina, the Argentinian side more than perhaps the Chilean side. Mm -hmm. And I remember on one particular trip, um, I was just days on horseback with all these gauchos, you know? And you just ride and ride and you go to a little shack and then one of the gauchos would just get a lamb and they'd, uh, they'd prep the lamb essentially just by cutting it in half, oh, yes. light a huge fire, and they'd just sit this lamb for hours over this fire. Brilliant. And then a knife would be stuck in it and you'd be given a tin mug and the mug, you just get this wine, this Malbec poured into it, you know? And it, you know, it's in a tin mug and it just tastes so good. And then you get your knife and you just go cut a bit of the lamb off or even snip off a kidney. Fantastic. So basic, so tasty, just, just a wonderful way to, uh, to live. Yeah. Who needs Michelin star restaurants when you have life experiences like nobody, that? Amazing, nobody, nobody. Absolutely no, amazing. No. Well, that's a great thing about that Great Friday. Malbec is one of the great, great Fridays of the world. Very particular to Argentina. The thing about Malbec is it's a very big tannic grape, so in its youth it's quite unapproachable. So they have a lot of new technology for some of the younger Malbecs, a uh, technology called Thermoflash, which softens it. That makes it much more accessible. Because ironically, Argentina has only got 2% of the Irish market. Well, you consider Ava Peron, Gauchos, Maradona, all the imagery we have, it's crazy that it doesn't have a bigger market share when you think Chile is 20%. So we've kind of always wondered what that is, and particularly with a country that loves beef so much as Ireland, we really, really got to talk about Argentina, and we really got to get you guys out there to try more and more Argentinian wines. So we've got two Malbecs, because that's what Craig really wanted to taste today. Very different, but both, uh, both from the Mendoza region. Mendoza is 70% of the total crush in Argentina, and put it in context, Mendoza is bigger than the whole of the Chilean wine production. So big, big, big area, flat, desert, and only because the Andes are there would there be any wine at all. So thanks to the Andes, they've got enough water irrigation systems in to produce this desert-like, big, big, rich reds. So when we try well, it's, to it's, first... It's funny, it, I mean, the, the country itself is blessed, isn't it? It's got all the, you know, the, the, the variety of climates there, but everything that, that nature needs to grow is there, and that's Absolutely. what's beautiful about Patagonia. Do you know what I love about Malbec as well? You, you rarely get a bad one. Yeah, yeah. You know, no matter what bottle you pick up, you get a good one. But other ones, you know, the kind of more consumer-friendly ones, you'll always pick up a bad Chardonnay or you yeah, know, true. Uh, but, but, but or Merlot. But these are always good. Absolutely. Is that Absolutely. an accident? Am no, I lucky? It, it, no, it's not. It's because basically they're so, it's so warm they can extract so much flavour, and there's never there's never subtle Malbecs. Malbecs are always attitude, and attitude makes for real sort of fun wines, and people love that. There's no doubt about it. I mean, this is the ultimate barbecue wine. I mean, friends coming around, but they also can go right to the height. I mean, you go to the higher altitude vineyards within Argentina, I mean, Topongato. We, were, we had a thing in Argentina where we weren't drinking by alcohol content, it was by altitude, because it's such a fun thing in Argentina. It's a thing they do really, really well. They're understanding the cooler the climate, the more preserved of the fruit and more expressive the fruit is. But let's, let's try one of these ones here and see what you, you think of this, Craig, because certainly in my experience, these wines have been a real showstoppers. Now we're starting off with the San Lucas Malbec, and this wine on the site, you're talking less than a tenner, so this is really, really, really good value. And let's get our noses into this one. It's really, uh, it's really inviting, isn't it? Very much, it's it tastes, tastes me. Brambly fruits, cigar, smoky, all those things which you shouldn't get in a wine as cheap as this, but you do because of the warmth and the, the baked fruit nature of the Mendoza region. Let's try this. Craig has promised me he won't spit. What do you think of that? That's delicious. And length of flavour. The persistence of the mm. flavour. It's kind of going on and on and on. Spice, pepper, all those things. Still there, it's quite peppery now actually on the back. Very yeah, peppery now. Nice. And, and, and as I said to you, Argentina can produce this because it's one of the world's big producers. We don't realise that. It's top five producer in the world. But they can produce wines of this quality uh, for this type of price point. Fantastic. Okay. Now what are you, what are you doing? Oh, sorry. That's sinful. I know. I believe that's sinful. That's too many years in the wine trade, my friend. <laughs> you know? 
That's prison, preservation, self-preservation. I've got to last it through. So that's the, the San Lucas. That's a ten or a bottle, around a ten or a bottle. Even less, even less. More, uh, I think Very on the good. website it's eight ninety nine. So that's a really, really good one for if you want a big gang of friends coming around for a barbecue, you won't go wrong with that. Superb. And that's only twelve and a half percent, so that's not gonna That's not, not your big blockbuster. You that's that's not your blockbuster. But on the other hand, our second uh, Malbec today is much more of a showy style of Malbec. This is the Pascual Tosso, one of the oldest uh, companies in Argentina. It is Alta Reserva Malbec 2008. And unlike the last wine, this is 14% alcohol. Average age of the vines in this wine is 60 years old. So you're talking their best, best vineyards. They hand pick it, they go over the vineyard again, and they pick the best fruit. Everything about this is real blockbuster. But um, it, is it worth three times the, the, the value of the last one? That's the challenge we have here. Look at the so color of it. Already, the, the color of it's Absolutely. pretty different, isn't it? Absolutely. So let's see, does this live up to the expectation? Certainly on the nose, there's a much more complex nose. Mm. No, this is handcrafted, so this is brand new uh, oak. They won't use any old oak in this. And you can even get that vanilla toasted oak, oaky notes of it. Much more damson and prune, much more autumn fruits than the other one, which would be more summer fruits. It's, um, it's, uh, it's softer. Yeah, absolutely. Beautiful, beautiful. Can we taste it? Let's go for it. Yeah, we'll spit this one. <laughs> oh, getting a knife and a fork in my head. That is big. Big, big wine. That's but, amazing. But big and not clumsy. Sometimes it's easy to be big and baked, but there's ripeness of fruit, there's integration of oak, the tannins aren't overly aggressive. It's only 08, it's only got a couple of years in the bottle. But after the period in oak, it's just really, really soft, luxurious. That is definitely the sit down, as oh. I used to call these wines, the, sat the Saturday evening wines we're sitting down watching a really good chat show on, on yeah. our local. Do you know of any? I think there's some good ones in our country. And that's, yeah. that's cheese board, glass of wine, life yeah. is good. Or a nice, good. Uh, a really nice piece of steak. So maybe some black beans, if you can learn how to do black beans South American style with that. Fantastic. A little bit of pork rind in there. <laughs> That Gout is good. Shows oh, Gout hey, shows. let's let's. This uh, is cowboy. This is cowboy wine. This that is, is um, that's a real. See that to me. That's a real treat. Yeah, that would be a real treat, wouldn't mm. it, to have a bottle of that? Absolutely fantastic. Gorgeous. Well, guys, from uh, Craig and Wine Times, cheers, and hope you enjoy uh, your chance to try these wines soon. Slaunch it. Slaunch it.